Yo, what's up everyone, it's Gad here, and in this video we're going to be getting ready for the weapon switching. So at the moment we've got it, so we can really easily create new weapons now. So all you need to do is just drag in this weapon base and add a mesh to it basically, and then it's going to work straight away. And then also what we can do now as well, is you can see this first weapon working straight away. But what I can also do is disable this and then enable another one. And without having to do any setup, this weapon just works straight away. So you can see it working, I can reload this one as well. And then I can do the same thing, disable this one, enable the first one, and this one's going to be the current weapon again. So with that out of the way, let's just get straight into the video. Alright, so to get started, what we're going to be doing is creating a weapon base prefab. So I'm going to find the weapon that's already set up here, and then we're just going to make some changes. The first thing to do is to drag the target and the hint for the left hand. I make that a child of the weapon and the reason for that is is because for our different weapons we're probably going to want a different hand position for the left hand and then so what I'm going to do first actually is just make this a prefab and then unpack this one and then I'm going to call this open it up call it the weapon base rename the file and then create an empty here as well and this is just going to be called the weapon mesh and then I'm just going to copy this component, remove it, and then add it into the weapon mesh. And this is just to keep the the parent kind of tidier. And then paste component as new. And now I'll get the mesh renderer, copy it, remove it, and then just add it in here. And then I can just delete this mesh and the material because it's going to be the weapon base. So now that's pretty much done for the weapon base. And we're not going to add, uh, yeah, we'll just add it in now, actually. I'm going to add it to the right hand and then set this one inactive. And then, so first thing we want to do is go over to the weapon manager script. And we want to change where we get the components. And we'll be coming back to this script later on, but we just need to make a couple changes first. First one is on enable is the function we need to add. And then instead of getting the ammo in the start, we need to get it in and enable, on enable. <laughs> Same with the audio source, and then also with the recoil as well. And one thing in the recoil, we want to make this recoil follow position. It's going to be higher than inspector and public, because it's going to set automatically when we spawn in the weapon, basically. Because we're just trying to minimise the amount of setup in the inspector we need to do just to make it a lot easier to make weapons. And then, so this is all we can do now in the um, the weapon manager. We're going to go over to the player and create a new script. And then this is going to be called the weapon class manager. And then just create an add and open it up when it's ready. And in here, first of all, we're just going to delete the start and update. And then we're going to add a new namespace, which is going to be unityengine.animations.rigging. And we want a couple of variables here. The first one is going to be, it's going to be a public and left, no, it can be serialized field, this one. Serialized field, and it's going to be a two bone IK constraint. And then I'm just going to call this left hand IK. And also what we want is going to have a reference to our action state manager because at the moment this is the only script that depends on the weapon for when we're reloading and stuff. And one more thing we're going to need actually is a, it is going to be public and this is going to be the recoil follow position which is the transform, transform recoil follow position. And so for now those variables are done, we can add a new public void, and this is going to be called set current weapon. And then we want to pass in the weapon manager, and then call that weapon. There we go. Alright, so what we're going to do in this function, first of all, is just check if actions equals null. And then if it does, we're going to get the component, so actions equals get component, action state manager. There we go, and then now what we can do as well is just set the left hand IK dot data dot target to be equal to the weapon dot left hand target, which we haven't actually made yet. So let me just go over to the weapon 
I thought I forgot something. So this is going to be a public transform. And then so we're going to have the left hand target obviously. And then also the left hand hint. There we go. So in the weapon class manager, you can see that's set now. I'm going to duplicate this, change this one to be the hint. And then also just change this to say hint as well. And so for now, that's all we can do as well. And we need to head over to the action state manager. And then so here you can see we get the component and the audio source from the weapon in the start. We don't want to do that. We want to do the same thing as the weapon class manager and create a new public void and call this set weapon. And then once again, we want to pass in the weapon or the weapon manager, uh, weapon manager, call it weapon. There we go. And then so now we're just going to set those components. But first of all, this public game object current weapon, we're just going to change it to a weapon manager. And then so we can just go current weapon, set that equal to the weapon. Then we also want to set the audio source equal to be the weapon dot audio source, which I was meant to make public as well. Um, yep so we want to make these both hide an inspector and public for the audio source and the ammo there we go now back in the action state manager we can just add in the audio source and then also the ammo equal to the weapon dot ammo and that's all we need to do in there and back in the weapon class manager all we need to do after this is just go actions dot set current weapon or set weapon, pass in the weapon. And now finally in the weapon manager, on the on enable here, first of all, we're just going to go if uh, weapon. OK, we need another variable <laughs> weapon class manager, call this weapon class. So then if we can check if the weapon class is equal to null, then what we're going to do is get all these components because we only need to do it once. And then we're also just going to get the weapon class equal to get component in parent. And this is going to be the weapon class manager. And then I'm going to put this recall at the bottom because we also need to go recall dot recoil follow position. Set that equal to the weapon class dot recoil follow position. And then finally, all we need to do is go weapon class or yeah, weapon class dot set weapon, set current weapon, and then pass in this. And pretty much that's everything we're going to need to do apart from changing some things in the inspector. So first of all, this current weapon on the action state manager, we don't need to see it, so we can make it hide an in inspector. All right. And then, so the weapon class manager, we need to add the left hand IK, which is on the rig. And then also the recall follow position, which is under the camera follow position. And then finally, just on the weapon base, we need to scroll, find the left hand target and left hand hint, which obviously is going to be this left hand target and this left hand hint. And I'm going to override and apply all just to keep that on the prefab. All right, so if we test this out, everything should be working. As you can see, I can shoot, reload and everything. Obviously, we've got no mesh, but that's fine. But so the cool thing is what we can do if I turn off maximize on play, we're going to have this M4 carbine up first and disable that. So what we can do is you can see this working fine. Oops. You can see this working fine and we can disable this and then just enable the weapon base. And then you can see it just works straight away. And then so that's what we're going to be doing basically on the next episode. It's just being able to swap the weapons through the code to add the animations. But as you can see, everything's just set up nicely now that we don't actually really have to do anything to create new weapons. All right, so that's everything for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.